We talk about gut infections all the time. We see patients that come in that think their issue is a candida or they think it's an H. pylori. And sometimes it can be all the all of the above and we don't even know that. So it's really important that we get some good testing done. Uh, it's really important that when we have a gut infection, we have to have a sequence in how we deal with it. So people that have gut infections, you got to make the diet changes. You have to work on the digestion first because those can be serious impediments for your body healing. And the gut infection, a lot of times can be part of the reason why you don't feel good. Sometimes it can be all of the reason, but I'd say most people, it's part of a couple other things that are happening, but people, you know, we're in a culture that's very antibiotic driven. Oh, you have staff, you have strep, kill it now, antibiotic, you know, laser beam focus, hit it. And that may not be the case. And number one, it can be a big letdown. People are like, oh man, you know, that didn't, that wasn't it. But number two, a lot of times they can feel worse. So you really want to make sure if there is an infection that you have a plan that's comprehensive in nature, that's addressing what's going on. And again, this may be a little different if it's totally acute, like, Hey, I'm in Mexico. I'm feeling great. Boom. I eat something. I feel like crap. I have diarrhea. I have, okay. We may create a different plan based upon the clinical history leading up to this point, and then how acute the symptoms are, fast yeah, or glad, long term. And I'm glad you mentioned too, there is a sort of an order of operations to that too, because there may be higher priority Correct. infections, driving inflammation, as opposed to if you've got some candida, yes, candida can be a huge problem. I did a whole summit on candida, but if you had H. pylori, we're going to prioritize H. pylori over candida because it's going to affect much, much more mechanisms in the body. 100%, 100%. I'd also say next thing is just uh, adrenal stress in general. We know that high levels of cortisol are going to decrease gut barrier function. It's going to um, break down IgA or immunoglobulin A, which can have a beneficial effect on helping the immune system. It can gobble up or potentially attack some infections that may make their way into the gut. The idea that like you get exposed to an infection and that you automatically get infected isn't necessarily true. So there's a couple of ways that may happen. Number one is you get exposed to a large amount of an infectious material that overwhelms, overwhelms your immune response and you're sick no matter how healthy you are. This could be like, you're healthy, you go for a hike, you drink some lake water, boom, you got Giardia, you're sick. There's that. There's also, hey, you get exposed to just, you know, a lot of different microbes over time. Your gut is stressed from cortisol and IgA imbalances. Maybe you have some food allergens too. Maybe your stomach acid and enzymes have dropped. Now, boom, a stressful event happens. Now you start getting sick because your gut, your digestion, your inflammation accumulates. All stress summates or accumulates in the body and the gut barrier breaks down and cortisol and stress can go high, which can cause your gut barrier to break down. And then when it finally drops, that's going to make it hard for us to deal with inflammation. It's going to make it hard to build back that immunoglobulin barrier. And it's going to make it hard to have energy and deal with stress. Yeah. So when people hear stress, they kind of just tune out because they're like, everybody talks about stress. What am I supposed to do? Just meditate and do yoga. So here's kind of the, I guess the granular in the flesh example of what could happen. Let's take someone who has a bad boss and every Monday when they go to work, they get a knot in their stomach. They feel sick to their stomach because they know they're going to go in. They've got this micromanaging boss that they hate, or they've got somebody that wears perfume that makes them sick next to them. So they have this fight or flight reaction every Monday morning and then Tuesday and on and on and on. Mm -hmm. So it might not be that your relationships are stressed. It could be, but your relationships could be great. Your family life, your kids, I mean, your home life, all that could be great. But then you have this stress every day of a boss. That is still enough to degrade the gut barrier and cause issues over time. And we've seen that happen where let's say the boss gets transferred out and then they have a new boss that comes in and it's a better boss. And all of a sudden this person's gut complaints magically goes away. It was just because of that fight or flight reaction getting turned off, they were able to relax at their job. And then that parasympathetic healing reaction came in and started to work on the gut. Yeah, many people, they kind of like categorize their stress, they kind of just say stress is, and they put it all their stress in the emotional category, work relationships, family finances, but they forget that the gluten that I'm eating, or the gut bug is now putting stress on my body. So now my emotional reserves drop. So instead of being able to have three or four emotional stress problems at one time, now I can only deal with one. And then now I'm, I'm flipping out on my kids or I'm, I'm arguing with my wife and we're fighting more or 
um, um, losing my cool at work. Part of that is, is because that emotional stress bandwidth drops when other stressors come in. So it's like, people just kind of look at emotional stress, like it's this, this thing unto itself. And I just have to change my strategy or, or meditate more. But a lot of times, fixing the other stressors that we talk about allow more bandwidth to be allocated to that part of the system.